place has a lot of bling. I'm on a quest across India through lands of glittering gold, exotic jewels and amazing craftsmanship. Now you're looking like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> and my love of fine jewellery has brought me to Chennai. I love what you're wearing. I'm Nikita Anand and you're watching Oh My Gold. is a dynamic metropolis steeped in history. A fascinating blend of British era monuments, Portuguese churches and grand Hindu temples, the city is a gateway to South India. It's my first day in Chennai and my favourite way of exploring any city is through the local market. That's where you get a feel of the local culture, see what the people are wearing. Today I'm in Chennai's busiest market. Let's see what I can find. The bazaar is abuzz with ecstatic shoppers. Chinnaikars love to splurge on fine things. Flowers, silks and gold. Everything here looks like gold. This particular marketplace is special. People from all over come here to shop for that most momentous of Tamil events, weddings. Bigger earrings? No, I want a gold. Gold. Bigger. And what you simply can't do without at a wedding, whether a relative's or your own, is a significant amount of gold jewellery. And I know just the person who can tell me what kind of jewellery is flying off the shelves in Chennai. I'm at GRT Jewellers to see Radha Krishnan. GRT Jewellers are very well known amongst jewellery enthusiasts in Chennai. Radha Krishnan, who is one of the two brothers carrying on this family legacy, has offered to be my guide. So I see a lot of beautiful pieces in front of me. Is this all typical Chennai jewellery? Very true. Let me start you with the trailer. If you see this piece, mm -hmm. there's a lot of tradition work going into it. Mm -hmm. It's a tiger claw. Right. And it's got a beautiful lion head on the top. What is the significance of having tiger claws, lion heads in pieces of jewellery? Tiger claws shows the boldness. Lion head is like a guardian to the god. This kind of uh, very pieces which got a lot of work on it, it's usually heavy. Otherwise, we'll not be able to show this kind of work on the jewelry. If you see the smile on the faces, right. there's a lot of depth into it, there's a lot of, lot of work. Detailing. A lot yeah. of detailing goes into it. Jewelry here is characterized by fine designs, painstakingly crafted by highly skilled artisans to whom the craft has been passed on over generations. Radha Krishnan tells me that traditionally, every family in Tamil Nadu had their own personal goldsmith or thattan, as they are known in Tamil, who created made-to-order ornaments for every member of the family. This is again a traditional piece called Navaratna. These are the nine gods. So this represents the nine planets. Exactly. The nine planets brings a lot of good luck to the wearer. Normally I think Navratans are only strings, but there's a very, very true. beautiful uh, pendant tri Typical here. Navratna piece is just a mala. Right. This kind of piece goes with a modern dress and a traditional dress. So it's going with my dress right now. Very, very, very true. It looks beautiful. Again, this part of the nine gems, emerald. This piece is stunning. These are all uncut natural emerald. If you take traditional Tamil Nadu women, they love to wear stones. Right. So this has come from that history. Since centuries, gems and colored stones have not only been used in jewelry for aesthetic appeal, but for their supposed healing powers as well. Some even believe that these also work as lucky charms and may influence one's destiny. See the beauty of this ruby? Mm -hmm. Unlike the emeralds, these are cut. Right. The fire and the luster comes from the cut of the ruby. So is that what makes it appear transparent? Exactly. And this is a very traditional design. So is this a piece that probably, you know, a woman from every household in very Chennai would have? Every woman must have. So what is the one piece that I must take back with me? Since you're asking, I'm going to show you another beautiful piece. Okay. This is the piece with a lot of bling. Exactly. It's got a lot of 
glitter, luster and fire and a traditional end of the piece. So this piece probably would be the epitome of what traditional Chennai jewellery stands for since it has the motives, it has the precious stones. Very, very true. It's like all the best of all pieces are there in this one piece. When it comes to ornaments, Chennaikar seem to have a simple motto. When you've got it, flaunt it. I'm meeting someone who can tell me a thing or two about how to flaunt the glittering stuff in ways that go beyond just wearing it. Madhuvanti Arun is a dancer, art collector, and she's introducing me to the lustrous world of Tanjong paintings. It's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. The gold here is also used to decorate houses. Yes, but before we go into decorating houses, mm -hmm. would you like to see some of the boxes that are used to put this fascinating jewellery in? Absolutely. Look at this. You know for sure what this box is because you have the image of a necklace embossed onto it. Is this real gold? Absolutely. 24 karat gold leaf. Real gold. Wow. Tanjo paintings are a classical art form that originated in Tanjavur, a small town 350 kilometers south of Chennai. Tanjo art traces its origins to the 16th century. Today, it's all the rage around the country as art makes its way into the homes of the rich and famous. This painting actually has real gold and real gems as in rubies, rubies emeralds, yes, diamonds and even pearls. Wow! Because this is Goddess Lakshmi so we put her with all the jewels because she's the goddess of wealth well. for us. But some of the other paintings have glass, semi-precious stones, right. things like this. So people love their gods and goddesses Absolutely. and they love their gold. Absolutely. And they found a unique way of yes. combining the two. two. Yes. And also keeping it near them, close to them, yes. around them. And worshipping them and feeling good looking at their gods, looking at themselves and enjoying the whole process. So if you look at it, each painting is different from mm. the other. But it's yeah. all real gold. Oh yes, the gold doesn't change. Come what we can't may. play around with the gold. No, we don't play around with our gold. gold. It has to be real gold. Traditionally, Tanjo paintings depict gods, goddesses and saints. But it has a more contemporary avatar too. Artists are experimenting with various subjects and forms and taking Tanjo art beyond its medieval aesthetic. Here's something I'm going to show you. Open it. A visiting card holder. Absolutely. Tanjo art, very beautifully embossed into the wooden card holder. Right. A little bit of creativity that I want to show you is that you can have your name written in gold on your door. <laughs> but you see, I don't see myself using this. You don't? No, and I'll tell you why, because I'd always be worried that someone's going to come and steal this gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are many people in this who city that? who put this up on their doors and feel mightily thrilled that they have their names written on gold. Chennai might possibly be the only city where you can proudly, and rather loudly, announce your name on a custom-made plate of gold. There really is no way of escaping the allure of the yellow metal here. Here's a double stone pearl neck piece. It is studded with a lime green emerald and a light pink ruby. Its contemporary style is perfect for a fresh, youthful look. Team it up with a light summer dress like this one. What is it about terracotta that you really like working with? This is a 7 cost 24 karat gold encased South Indian meal. I'm at this beautiful beach in Chennai and I've probably collected enough shells to make myself a necklace. But that's not the real reason I'm here. I'm here to meet a jewellery artist who makes her jewellery from organic materials and her studio is right here by the beach. If you thought Chennai can't see beyond gold, you'd be mistaken. Meet Bindu Mathai. She brings her passion for jewellery to life using one of the oldest jewellery making materials in the world. And it's completely organic. Terracotta. The use of terracotta or baked clay in jewellery making dates back to the Indus Valley Civilization. That's 3,500 years ago. How's that for a sense of history? 
You know, I love what you're wearing. Really? Have you designed this? Yes. So this is what I've come here for. This is inspired by the Tamil Nadu folk cart. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come and have a look at sure. it? Sure. It's a peacock. We can see the colors actually. We have given different shades of blue and green, and we have got this gold beads and around it. And is this supposed to resemble Rudra? Yes. So this texture, we get it. You know, clay. It takes any shape and texture and all that. So that's the USP of using terracotta. Yes. Very, you can easily mold it. Easily mold and it, and if it doesn't come out properly, you can again remold it. Terracotta jewelry can be extremely versatile and dramatic. You can choose a color, shape, design, or motif, and have it turned into a piece of jewelry relatively inexpensively. This is more like a temple jewelry, and it's these are supposed to be rubies studded on it, but. Of course, there is no rubies. Oh, this piece is Lord Shiva. Yes, and you can see the circle so on top of it. I've given the extension with snag right. all over. And I see that even though it's terracotta, you use a lot of gold. Yes, it highlights the whole piece actually. That's why I've used a little bit of gold everywhere. It makes it come alive. Yes. Bindu draws her inspiration from Chennai's fervor for color, deities, and for gold. This is a beautiful, elaborate piece here. Yeah, Nikita, this is the piece for which I've won the national award for. It's based on the story of Rama. So these are the 10 Ravan heads. Yes. And there's another interesting thing is Hanuman at the back. So Hanuman adjusts the strings. Yes. How cool. This is Ganda Varunda. It is the two-headed bird. Hmm. It's in our Hindu mythology. These birds are there. I'd like to try this one yes, on. sure. So, Bindu, what is it about terracotta that you really like working with? It's the most interesting medium to work with. And it's most uh, pliable when it's in the clay mm -hmm. form. You can mold any shape out of it. Any fashion tips while wearing terracotta jewelry? So when you're wearing terracotta, try not to wear anything other than terracotta, like other semi-precious stones or gems or anything like that. That will distract the whole piece of jewelry. Her collection is unusual, elegant, affordable, and a lot of fun. But terracotta is delicate and needs careful handling. So if you tend to toss your earrings around after a hard night of parting, think again. Now back to the real deal. It's a busy day at GRT and I'm hoping to catch Radha Krishnan to get a look at what's new and exciting in their contemporary collection. As beautiful as the traditional pieces are, I was looking for something that fits into my daily life. I'm going to show you some of the pieces like that. Wow, this piece is exquisite. And it's very light. It's very lightweight. And if you see the piece itself, it's a combination of the Mughal era and it's given with a relief of traditional South Indian Kasmala. Okay, so that's these coins that have been used exactly. here. Exactly. So it's we a lot of straight lines and that's what exactly. makes it quite so, contemporary. And it not necessarily belongs to a religion. Mm -hmm. Anybody can wear this. Maybe, but for now, it's mine. It looks awesome on you. I would say this is one of our signature pieces. This is one of the most modern contemporary pieces. Mm -hmm. This concept has been evolved from a Mughal dynasty. Like when the you peacock. go the okay. peacock itself. Normally the peacock is flat in any jewelry. Here the peacock is also three-dimensional. And you don't need 3D glasses to see that. From the melting pot that is India, emerges a staggering variety of styles in ornamentation too. The popular trend today is a fusion of styles in jewellery, combining local and quintessentially Indian elements and motifs with influences from around the world. If you see this, it's a lot of uncut rubies is used throughout the piece and we have given it with the relief of maple leaf, the Canadian maple leaf. Right. We've used that as a constant. So which it's a beautiful fusion again. You have a sort of western element which is combined true. with uncut, beautiful yeah. Very true. rubies here. It doesn't show a lot of air when you wear it, mm -hmm. but still gives a subtle statement when you wear it. You know, I love this piece. It's a beautiful, all-purpose piece. And I know this is supposed to go around the neck. But maybe I'll just try it right here. And it fits. Suits you. Miss India, it suits for Miss India. Yeah, you know, my head is made for a tiara or a crown. True, very true. <laughs> and there's my Helen of Troy moment. Chennai's famous love affair with gold doesn't end at jewellery or with hanging gold on walls. Some people here eat it too. I'm safe 
curious. Look, this is a seven course, 24 carat gold encased South Indian meal, and I can't wait to dig in. In ancient times, Egyptians and Indians are said to have feasted on gold for its supposed elixir like qualities, a rather expensive way to stay young and healthy. But I'm not complaining. Bring me my idli wrapped in gold, if you please. Here is your golden idli. I know I have a big appetite for gold, but this really is a lot. Is this real gold? Said so it's a hundred percent real, twenty-four karat gold. We need to serve our guests something different, something nutritive, and also which they can feel pride when they dine. Chef, how much gold do you think I can eat every day? Well, you can eat as much as gold you'd like to have and as you can afford. My meal also included masala dosa, medu vada, kavan darsi halwa, mysore pak, and kheer, all draped in gold. And to wash it all down, a golden drink. Yes, I know I'm binging, but hey, I don't mind a few extra kilos of gold. And here's food for thought of fashion. Glam up your monochrome dress with this dramatic diamond bib. Or for understated chic, choose a more delicate piece like this one. And remember to pick a piece with coloured stones that match your dress. Now you're looking like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I like this piece. I'd like to try this on. Chennai's love for gold is no secret, but there's a new trend in town that just showed up on my radar. To get past these closed doors, you need to whisper a password, bespoke. This is Bharti, who promises patrons a gleaming experience, but by appointment only. Bharti, it's my first time at a bespoke studio, so what am I to expect? It's all about the experience that I want to give you. Mm -hmm. That you relax and you put on the jewellery, tell me what you like, and I make design stuff for you too. Wow, that sounds like some serious pampering. But something tells me it would cost a fortune. This piece here is very stunning. It's a blue topaz. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all natural stones. The blue topaz specifically is um, colour enhanced. Mm. There you go. It's quite long. I think it suits you. I quite like these colours. It's going pretty well with what I'm wearing. Bharti Ravi Prakash creates bespoke jewellery for the fashionistas and glitterati of the city. Here in her studio, clients come for jewellery that is exclusively created to suit their tastes and personality. I love big cocktail rings. That one? Yeah, that one's really nice. That's a 20mm pearl, above actually, 22mm. Look at this, this actually goes with that. You know, my wrist is bare right now. <laughs> Let's try it on. My inspiration in this was butterflies. Mm -hmm. um, though, you know, the motif looks more like flowers. It they does, have that's what I was going to say. Yeah, but they have little antlers. Can you see them? Yeah. There? I love earrings. Most of them I actually make for myself and then I tell the client, come on now, let's try it on. <laughs> <laughs> so these ones look very, very interesting. Yeah, these are rutilated quartz. There's pink tourmalines around it. Now you're looking like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm still enjoying everything that I've worn, Christmas tree or not. Have you seen this piece? It's a multicolored sapphire piece. Mm -hmm. Those are uncut sapphires and mm -hmm. cut sapphires. Yellow sapphires stand for Jupiter. It gives you prosperity and it uh, makes you very balanced. Bharti involves her customers in the design process too. She uses the rarest and most high quality gemstones. Each piece is high value and unique. Prices range from under a lakh to several lakhs for a single piece. Wow, this is such a dramatic piece. Amber, you've heard of amber, right? Amber is resin. Mm. So it's it's uh, it accumulates over millions of years. So darker they are, the more older they are. Okay. But by young, I'm talking millions of years. It just actually gives the impression of rocks or boulders. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick this one up or I'll have to wait another million years. Bharti likes big and bold statement pieces that say something about the person wearing them. Her jewellery also reflects change in the conventional sensibilities of Chennai. After the relaxed environs of Bharti's studio, where my heart went a flutter several times, especially on matters of price, I'm back to experience the heady gold rush at GRT. 
gold is a symbol of Lord Lakshmi. So right from a baby girl is born, her first gift by her parents is gold. Like for this piece, it's a very simple piece. Mm -hmm. So this would be gifted to... A newborn, <laughs> like a lot of children are blessed with a golden spoon. Yeah, a lot of children are blessed with a gold Gold jewelry. <laughs> yeah, very true. The next stage in a girl's life, like when she's 12, 13, early 14, teens. early teens, these are like some beautiful, delicate pieces. This is actually made with turquoise. The gold is sandblasted. The importance is given to the colors. Parents won't invest in gold because it's one of the safest investment. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of win-win situation for both. I like this piece. Go ahead. I'd like to try this on. It's probably going with my dress. It's a beautiful piece. Young girls in Chennai love a splash of color in their jewelry, encouraging jewelers to use semi-precious stones and lighter designs that are attractive, trendy, and not too expensive. These are pieces owned by teenage girls, prospective future brides. So the pieces started getting a little heavy. She takes it along when she is wedded to her in-laws. So it becomes like a first jewelry investment in her marriage life. So this also works as, you know, a piece that she would start collecting for her trousseau. Very true. The big fat Indian wedding is world famous. Chennai's are no exception. If anything, the bling factor is bigger and brighter here. By popular demand, bridal jewelry is heavy and grand heirloom pieces are much in demand. It's a beautiful piece studded with Burmese rubies, mm -hmm. Ankit diamond, a nagar, a Mahalakshmi sitting under it. So what makes this an heirloom piece? Nikita, look at the workmanship in this. Look at the smiling face of Goddess Mahalakshmi. The beauty of this piece comes out on the patient, hard work a person sits down and delivers on this. Mm -hmm. It needs a lot of experience, it needs a lot of patience, it needs a lot of dedication. Probably another 15-20 years you will be finding pieces like this only in museum. Chennai's love for gold left me dazzled. I discovered some of the finest and most intricate craftsmanship got an eyeful of contemporary trends and a peek into Chennai's wonderfully bejeweled, gilded heritage. As far as individual pieces go, here's what made it to my shortlist of favourites. There's no escaping the charm of this bright and precious ruby necklace. I'm a girl who appreciates a little drama and this bold and beautiful necklace takes drama to a whole new high. The classic Kasumala is a total must-have for every goldenista. Chennai is perfect for an education in all things gold and it opened my eyes to a whole new world of bling.